to my third video as the Scouse Scientist. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's been watching these videos and sharing them. Um, I really appreciate all the support that I've received so far. So I thought it would be a really nice idea if this week I was to give you a little insight into what goes on in the lab. So lots and lots of people go for um, genetic testing and they get a blood sample taken and then they may wait a few weeks or days um, and they get the result back. But I don't think they actually realise a lot of the time what's going on in the background, in the lab, in order to get that result back to the patient. So hopefully that's what I'm going to show you today. So the genetic condition that I'm going to focus on is Down syndrome. Now, there's loads and loads of different tests that we can do in the lab um, for Down syndrome. So, for example, if someone wanted an urgent result, we needed to get the results out as quickly as possible for whatever reason, then there's a completely different test that we could do in order to get a fast result. But the type of test that I'm going to show you today is called karyotyping. And this is the gold standard traditional method used to detect these type of genetic conditions. So the reason that I wanted to focus on Down syndrome is because I feel like a lot of people have heard of it. You may know probably what it means for the patient and for the family, but do you actually know the genetics behind it? So hopefully that's what I'm going to show you now. So hello and welcome to the lab. Um, so because we're in the lab, it's important that we've got to wear our lab coats and gloves at all times. So basically, when samples arrive in the lab, usually a blood sample, they come with a referral card. So what we have to do is check that the patient details match on both the blood and the referral card, and then they get booked into our computer system so that they can get tracked through each step of the process. Okay, so once the sample's been booked in onto the lab system, um, what happens then is it's ready for cell culture, which Jess does here. So the first stage of that is that she adds the blood sample to this solution of pre-prepared media. So what's in here is basically loads and loads of good stuff to help the cells grow. And in particular, we want the white blood cells to grow because they will contain the DNA and all the genetic material. So there's an agent called PHA in here, which is used to help the white blood cells grow. So Jess is just gonna show us how she does that. into the tube. Now I always add 0.4 ml for adults and um, into 5 ml of pre-prepared media. So just below the 0.5 line. wash it in so it gets much of the blood from the sides of the pasta out. Lid on that and then I'm just going to invert it so it all mixes and ready for cell culture. Okay so basically what happens now is that um, tube gets put in the incubator at 37 degrees the reason for that is because it's the same temperature as our body temperature, so it should help the cells to grow. Um, and it's left in there for 72 hours. Um, and then Jess is going to tell us a bit about what happens after that. So after the 72 hour incubation, a reagent is added which stops cell division. And then a further reagent is added which um, condenses the cells so they're ready for inside. So these are the cells that have been growing in the lab for the last few days um, and what we need to do now is to drop them onto this little glass slide so that we can visualise them under the microscope. So Alicia here is just going to show us exactly how she does that. Okay so first I'm going to breathe onto the slide so it creates some moisture to allow the cells to spread. Drop the sample and then drop a bit of fix on top to fix the cells. Okay, 
So if we looked at these slides under the microscope now, we wouldn't really see anything because they'd just be clear. So what we need to do is stain them with this Leishman stain um, and that'll just give us the bands that we see on the chromosome so that we can visualise them under the microscope. So that's what Carol here is going to show us now. So she's just washing it with that purple stain um, and that'll just stain all the chromosomes so that when we look at them under the microscope we'll be able to identify them easily. Okay so what happens at this stage is that these slides get loaded onto this big machine here and basically it takes loads of images of all the different cells on this slide so that we can look at them on our computers. So basically it just saves us looking down the microscope to analyse the cells um, and it just makes it a little bit easier for us. So they go on here and then all the images get loaded onto our computers for analysis. Right, so what we end up with is loads of images of all the different types of cells that are on that slide. So if I click through you can see all the different cells and these are just the chromosomes so if you remember back to my previous video um, I was talking about the different chromosomes that we have in every cell and this is what contains our genetic material so most people will have 23 pairs of chromosomes so you'll have a pair of ones twos threes all the way down to chromosome number 22 and in the last two you'll either have an X and a Y if you're male or two X's if you're female so what we do with these is put them into what's called a carrier type and as you can see here there's all the different chromosomes a pair of ones a pair of twos threes and two x's so it's a female but what you can see here is this patient has actually got three copies of chromosome number 21 and that is what's causative of down syndrome so hopefully I've given you a little insight into the type of things that go on in the genetics lab. So just remember that carrier typing is just one type of test that we do in the lab. So obviously for conditions such as Down syndrome that are caused by having an extra chromosome, carrier typing is really good because it allows us to visually look at all the chromosomes and see how many are there. However, other genetic disorders are not caused by having an extra co um, copy of a chromosome. Instead, they're caused by tiny changes or spelling mistakes in the DNA codes that make up our chromosomes. So obviously, carrier typing wouldn't be a good test to test for these type of conditions because we wouldn't be able to physically see it by looking at the chromosomes. So instead, a different type of test would be needed, but I'll cover that in a future video. So hopefully you could see from the video that Down syndrome is caused by having an extra copy of chromosome number 21. So instead of having two copies, they have three copies and we call this trisomy 21. Now, in the majority of cases, this is just a totally random event that happens when the sperm meets the egg and it results in the fetus being born with three copies of chromosome 21 instead of two. Now, there are other genetic conditions that are caused by having an additional chromosome. So if you've got an extra copy of chromosome number 13, this causes Patau syndrome. And if you've got an extra copy of chromosome number 18, this causes Edward syndrome. Now these are both much, much more severe than Down syndrome and actually babies born with these conditions only survive um, not very long after birth. You can also have extra copies of the X and Y chromosomes that lead to other conditions. But other than those ones that I've mentioned, um, you're not able to survive with an extra copy of any other chromosome. So. Hopefully you've learned something today about what goes on in the lab and also about Down syndrome. So if you've enjoyed the video, then please feel free to share and um, like. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. So thank you to everyone in the lab who's helped with the video and got involved. And most importantly, thank you all for watching.